a year and a half. With me is attorney Jeff Gold, who joins us from Denver, Fox News legal analyst Peter Johnson Jr., and criminal defense attorney Linda Kenny Bodden. All right, guys, can these Twitter messages be used against her at the trial or in her favor on appeal if she's convicted? Peter, I'll go to you on this one. You know, that's interesting. There have been some cases where out-of-state, uh, out-of-court statements have been used uh, against uh, a defendant, especially in sentencing. We just saw that here in New York with regard to uh, the woman who was passing secrets for the terrorists. Right. Yeah, it can be used. Absolutely, it can all, be used. All right, but not dur during the trial now? Do I, you I, I don't think she's coming now? back on the stand. We don't even know if she's actually saying this stuff. You know, imagine if Al Capone was doing this. <laughs> Is this the new thing in American jurisprudence where criminal defendants are going to get on the airwaves? Well, if a, judge, if a judge allows it, I mean, but then again, Jeff Gold, First Amendment, can the judge stop it? No, she has every right to uh, to blog. She's doing it through a friend. There's a, there's a First Amendment, after all, and it's the number one, number one amendment. No, nothing a judge can do about it. All right. Linda, you agree with that? Nothing the judge can do about it, but I'm not convinced it's not her friend trying to capitalize on something. I'm not convinced it's her, even though the sheriff said that they talk on the phone every night, because you have to be more than mad and evil to do something like this in the middle of the trial. Well, after the evidence well, I heard, I mean, <laughs> it may be. fit. She you know? could be, right. But this may be, may be the new trend. When you've got anchors kicking your brains in every day, every night, and you're a criminal defendant, and maybe you're innocent. I don't believe she's innocent. Maybe you're innocent. And you say, I'm going to fight back. Yeah. So this may be well, the what is trend. she saying? She hates the prosecutor? I mean, I think about know. it. She's, she's going back and forth it, with anchors uh, about yeah, lifting, Jeff, her, what is lifting she her finger up and all this it's kind minor. of stuff. It's minor. It's really minor. There's really not that many tweets on it. There was one about Nancy Grace. There was one about Jane Velez Mitchell. It's it's really very, very minor stuff. There's nothing in here to worry about. All right. uh, I then think it's much to do on. about nothing. Let's move on then, Jeff. The jury continues to ask questions. Take a listen to this one and think about what it tells you. On the one side, we have demeaning multiple verbal slurs, a slap, a shove, a chokehold and a lunge perpetrated on Jody. On the other, we have a gunshot to the head, a four inch deep slit throat, and close to 30 stab wounds delivered by Jody to Travis. Is not the perpetrator of the greatest domestic violence, Jody? No. Wow, she said no, Linda. Uh, I, I, I am just, I, I, I have no words. I'm a defense attorney with no words for this, quite <laughs> and frankly. And you want to believe and, that? And, no, and I don't necessarily want to believe that because I think the juror asked a great question. I mean, quite frankly, that should have been the question for the prosecutor. Sit down, go home. We don't need ten days to hear of you. It, it's it, amazing. It, it's an interesting question, but it shouldn't have been asked in any courtroom in America. It's an absolutely improper question because what they're doing is taking the alleged criminal act and and posing it next to prior acts it has no, nothing no, to do with no, it. No, what they're saying well, is no, she's a... she's using as an excuse she's a victim of domestic violence, all right? And I'm the victim here. And the juror right. is saying, hey, wait a minute. You say you were pushed and shoved, and this guy was stabbed, killed, had a stroke. But it's not so a it's balancing test about which is the right. greater act of wow. domestic well, violence. But it is, but it is, it is a family question. Right. Jeff, what does it tell you the jury's Let thinking? Yeah, let, look, and they asked more questions about that. In fact, they asked the question, who was the bigger victim? Was Jody the bigger victim or Travis the bigger victim? And this Alice LaViolette, who, by the way, is a psychotherapist. She's not even a psychologist. She's certainly not really an expert witness. She testified in six cases in her whole life, and none of them were uh, for a man in a criminal case. Well, I'll tell you what. She says black and white. It's 100% every time she answers for Jody Arias, and she says Jody is the bigger victim. Travis is slashed well, um, 29 it, it, times. Well, he's, he's almost decapitated, shot in the head, and she says, because she's paid by the defense to say that, and I'm a defense attorney too. Well, and 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 you know what, Peter, I do agree with you. I mean, there are questions like judge. these that seem to have no place. It but at no the place. same time, Arizona allows it. It's bad. They I mean, want to ask. Th hey, th she's woman, up there as an expert. This woman is going into the dumper in this case. What is well, this expert talking about? This expert talked about a Snow White effect. This expert uh, wrote an article that Snow White. 
Snow White, the mythical figure, was a battered woman. Who, be but who beat here, her? Here who? she testified. Who beat that she, Snow White? That she, I want to know. I want to indict them. The dwarves. The dwarves. That's her How theory. How dwarves beat Snow no White? Idea. Disney made a lot of money off Snow White and didn't get any royalties. No That's idea. really what it comes down. That's what's happened in this case. Well, we're talking and, about and Snow White. Jeff, Jeff, was the jury rolling their eyes? Is their body language giving anything away when this domestic violence expert says Snow White was a battered woman and dwarves did it? Well, I'll tell you, you know, I've sat through most, uh, all of this defense, really, and it is really interesting to be in a jurisdiction where the jury gets to yes. ask these written questions because the questions are asked in the order. So you can see the questions that were asked uh, during the direct and then as you go into cross. And by the time you got to questions that must have been written during the cross-examination, they were boom, boom, chopping off Alice well, LaViolette's head. Doesn't, doesn't I mean, seem they to ask good. All right, panel, stick around. We're going to have more on Arias not. after the break, including what Jody's own father has to say about his daughter's honesty. You know, well. Jeff, I, I can't help but think that that jury is saying, you know, these expert witnesses will say anything for a buck. Am I wrong? Well, there's... You're, you look, the, you, when you have an expert witness, Judge, you want the expert witness actually to give a little bit, 1 or 2 percent, 5 percent, something to the other side so they sound like they're credible. Because uh, this is not DNA. This is about psychology. It's not black and white. So you give a little bit. There was nothing that Alice LaViolette would give up, nothing. In terms of the manipulation, has there ever been a case in the history of the world where it was clearer that a woman manipulated somebody with sex than in this case? And this jury has heard it and she has denied it. It doesn't make any sense you know, to this And the jury. shame of I'm this whole thing is, it. you know, when you have an expert like this, I mean, can you see her ever testifying again? I mean, she's been so destroyed on this no, case. No, well, and as a matter of fact, you she know, went here, to the hospital, apparently, she was she, so sick with regard to this uh, case. Yeah, Jeff. She's looked, phys she's looked physically shaken. I've seen her every day. I've seen her up close. Uh, I'll, you know, wave hi to her, say hi. She's a human being walking past me. She looks shaken by the end of the well, show. You know, yeah, but she's, the truth is, she's a, how she's long a does this DA go a, on with she, these cross-examinations? These cross-examinations no, go on for day after day after day. I think he's gotten yeah, the point true. early, early on. Yeah, all yes. right. And, you know, and right. in line Peter, with that, try our case in three notes. Gosh, yeah, wow. all of us. Right, right. In line with that, the defense expert witness doesn't seem to be bothered, as we've been saying, by Jody's lies. Take a look at this cross-examination that Peter references. Given all of these lies uh, that she told after June 4th of 2008, do they define her for you? Do they cause you problems in her believability? No, they don't. Why is that? Because if Miss Arias was a really good liar, she would have planned a really good lie, and she didn't. First of all, it's on the direct, but uh, she is a really good liar. She did plan a lie. It didn't work. She planned another lie. That one didn't work, so she planned a third one. I mean, is this woman serious? I, I don't know who's serious, and I don't know why we're having this kind of testimony. I don't see how this is competent testimony in, in, in any miscible? way. It, it, absolutely insane testimony. It's a person giving their opinion in a faulty investigation. There's no scientific method. It's a joke, but that's and it's what making they that do. Like but, that. but here, Peter made a point before when we were at break that, yeah. that both sides are murdering their own case. Here that's was true. the defense. The defense is, right. is going to send her right to the death penalty. The defense was, look, she is sick in the head. She's been sick in the head. She got attached to this man. She couldn't handle it when he broke it off. She wanted to kill him. She was going to confront him with a gun. They had sex when he said, I'm taking Mimi and not you to Cancun. Bang, bang, stay up 30 times, and, you know and that's what? it. And that is the whole thing, Jeff, isn't it? This case comes down to premeditation. You've got her grandparents' gun disappearing two days before she travels really? to, you know, to, uh, to meet with him, have sex, take his picture, and watch the camera. Well, a couple things on that. First of all, I don't, I don't think she's going to get the death penalty now, although I've said on this show earlier on I think she would because she was on that stand for 18 days, five or ten feet from the jury. It's still, no matter what happens, it's going to be very difficult for them to kill her, having been intimate with her, so to speak. The no, second thing is about that gun. You know, the M.E. says that she was shot after. So if she brought the gun to shoot him, why is she stabbing him first? There's a question about that, and the Arizona law may make it difficult. I think she'll get first degree. She's though. doing everything she can to convict herself 
herself and maybe the death penalty in this case. That's right, and she <laughs> could have gotten second degree. She could have been arguing second degree with the truth. Tweeting, selling paintings That's of right. Frank Sinatra, I and agree then with putting Linda. on crazy witnesses That's right. and not making sense. Do you think that the burden of proof in cases like this, now that you've got a jury so familiar with her, is even higher uh, for a jury because they've been with her so long? And we're going to wrap, Peter, yes or no? I think it becomes a cult of personality. Yeah, absolutely. They, they are being to the hate The longer her. the trial, the less likely she'll get the death penalty. And Jeff? Yeah, I, I agree with that. And Arizona law has some intricacies you can talk about another time. Okay, Jeff, Peter, Linda, thanks so much for being with us thanks, this Judge. evening. And coming up, anyone with.